Hello everyone, I'm Iron Phoenix and welcome back to a very quiet me. No, my audio is on. Okay, so here's the deal. Today a uh, game was released on Steam. It got through green light somehow. And the result was air control. Now we've probably heard of air control previously, a game that was advertised on Greenlight as a ultra-realistic flight simulator and it didn't deliver quite frankly it was um, lambasted for basically be not being a realistic flight simulator at all and it just seemed to get more and more bizarre as time went on completely breaking the promise that, that was given to Greenlight and today it has been released with their new realism mode which to be fair does look a lot better but because well the models i don't know where they've got the models from because it's quite a reason that they haven't made them because the other modes still use other assets so you know they're probably just lifted from somewhere anyway my main problems with this kind of practice is UIs are UI is something that we, we just kind of take for granted ultimately. And it's just something that's there. You know, this is a this is a user interface. And so it's this. There we go. And if I click on single player, I get sent to the single player screen and then I can do that and that. All of this is coded behind the scenes. Um, ground zero on hard, go back, um, yeah. Options menu, and all that's linked up, and so it's all this. Um, I need more FOV sliders really. Loads of them. Tons of them. Millions of them. I might even do an, their own little option. Know, so you can open advanced FOV and then you can have all kinds of tiny little minute settings anyway that's anyway so yeah and you can kind of go through various things I haven't actually built the options menu completely yet and that's why it's very very simplistic but anyway this is the UI and it's it's a very tiny thing and because it's quite a tiny thing any developer that uh, avoids fixing your very blatant UI issues you have to wonder about the state of the rest of the game what the code is like how it performs and in fact uh, one person on uh, who bought air control today is reporting very very poor performance I don't know quite what the uh, circumstances for this are but um, it's certainly something that should probably have been looked into though compatibility is quite difficult so um, you know you can kind of explain why an independent developer might have released their game and it may have performance issues on some machines because it is a massive field as somebody who needs to work compact you know um, I do know a little bit about this so but anyway ultimately we don't know the reasons for that frame rate that that performance problems but it kind of does cement point a little bit if the UI can't be if the person developer can't be bothered to fix the UI what's the rest of the game going to be like so let me expand on this a little bit so there are two issues that I have with the AI on air control three issues this is turning into a into a Monty Python sketch um, so three issues the first is that on the main menu so it's a little thing but on the main menu you have your buttons and you have a box behind your buttons goes and these buttons are spaced out a little bit and you have a box all the way around every single button except the exit button now it's obvious that the box just hasn't just needs to be pulled down a bit and you know it's a simple fix in fact it's so simple I can show you exactly what the fix is um, let me just go to the main camera open up the menu open this up and then I can show you Hopefully this is going to record. Um, right, so here we have GUI. So this begins the area, 
the invisible area that you can't necessarily that you can't see but it's essentially a box and it defines the coordinates for where these buttons are going to be placed uh, so that when you do your um, here we go so when you do your GUI layout you don't need to define a screen position for your buttons because you can just say to fit inside the layout and then when you've finished your area you just down the bottom you close off your end area with end area some buttons you see I've got GUI.enabled equals false these are uh, buttons that aren't intended to be pressed yet and so are locked off so the multiplayer is locked off and the leaderboard are locked off um, so yeah that's that and ultimately it isn't particularly difficult to add a box you do box, and then you take this because I'm lazy and then you do that because otherwise it won't compile and then you hit your save button it compiles the code and you get your box and now that box is a little bit too big so let's just fix that so uh, that's your width sorry that's your width and that's your height and we don't need it to be that this large so let's make it 100 because we've got five buttons and each of them are 20 high it'll work so that wasn't particularly difficult we now have a bo a, a box that goes around behind our buttons and that was hmm, not even a minute of code really it was just you know uh, a very very quick fix so if quick fixes are being ignored for a game then what's the rest of the game going to look like so that was the first bit the second bit is UI uniformity so it's just a general um, issue that I have so a game can look terrible um, or it doesn't need necessarily need to look pretty but it does need to be a uh, consistent art style so as an example a prison architect it's a 2d game with um, sprite based pris uh, prisoners and staff members that move around the screen and a lot of the intelligent stuff is all buried behind the scenes you never really see it um, except you kind of do because it's sim simulation so you see the, the, the the, the graphical stuff moving around you don't see all the crazy workings on that's going on behind the scenes so but that game it, it isn't exactly a very pretty game it's not like crisis 3 which looks um, great but it's um, it's a very uniform style now if you were to say replace all the prisoners with highly detailed models of prisoners but kept it in the same sort of 2D style that would look very very horrible and so when we look at the air control video and we see that the menus are in your default uh, unity layout which is this one and other newer assets are in um, you know a nice sort of font, a nice backdrop. Um, I think they've just been they're all part of um, some asset pack that they bought. But you know, so you've got a very very different style of um, UI um, architecture, and it isn't particularly difficult to change your UI stuff. You just need Gooey skin, I think. Great other. I oh know it's component, I think. And. Mm. Hmm. It's somewhere in here. Maybe it is game object. Yeah, it is those. Um, so it'd be. No, it wouldn't be that. Can't remember where it is, but it's not particularly difficult. Um, to use where is it? Oh, this is just slightly annoying me now because I can't find it. And uh, that's all stuff to do with saving. Um, 
Mm, I'll have to have a look for that later. Absolutely no idea where that's gone. Uh, so yeah, anyway. Um, where was I? So yeah, mismatched UIs, they, they just do generally look wrong. There was a third thing as well, and I cannot remember what the third thing was. Oh yeah, um, so UIs nowadays, com if you compare the UI from um, something like oh no, Half-Life, Half-Life 2, uh, where we, you have um, everything you need, but nothing you don't. So it's very, very defined. So you have your health, you have your ammo, and you have your reticle. It's very, very... Um, it's quite simplistic, really. You've just basically got what you need on the screen. Uh, the uh, weapon select uh, comes up when you actually um, want certain things, but otherwise it's hidden away. And when you pick up a weapon, you do get a UI um, thing to say what you've picked up, and you also get a UI thing to say if you take some kind of damage, it will kind of tell you what type of damage you're taking so you know as well as you know indicate damage indicators to show you where damage might be coming from so it's a very very basic AI uh, sorry UI and then we look at something like Eve which has a very very complicated UI but everything's sort of hidden in menus which you pull up but when you're in stations you might have your entire screen filled with uh, with menus that you're manipulating all kinds of things so, you know, th but there are two different styles of game. Eve is far more of a trading, fighting, you know, you do need those menus open at some point to be able to sort of see what you're doing manipulators as you need to. So, when a game floods your um, screen with things to click on, you know, go here, do this, click on this, uh, and it's all on your UI and it's all very cluttered. All it does is it clutters your UI and it's not necessary. Now, for Revoco, I have had to take certain steps which I'm not particularly a fan of. So, um, telling people, essentially, this is an object. Um, I'm not particularly a fan of that and I may change it in the future, but for now, I do have little sparkly things that say you can pick this up, you can you can manipulate this, you can fix this. Uh, this is how damaged it is, and it's all based in those sparkles. So white sparkles are you can pick this object up. Green sparkle, green sparkles through to red sparkles. It's a rainbow effect. Um, show how damaged something is. I'm not necessarily a fan of doing that, but I do know that. Some people do need sort of that kind of direction, and it's just for an ease of use for the player, I suppose. You know, so yeah, you know, that's why I've done that. But what I haven't done is put big green boxes to say, "Go here, um, do this, click this." This button does nothing, but you can click it anyway. Uh, that's just horrible horrible UI design and yeah I am complaining a lot about something that's very very surface based and doesn't really matter too much but the ultimate uh, message really that I have is that UI does matter UI design really does matter and if somebody cannot be bothered to try and get their box to fit neatly around their buttons if they are going to have a box then you've got to wonder what the state of the rest of the game is like. Now there are obviously some other issues with air control. There is obviously the quite, I wouldn't say controversial, but I think it's quite a low blow for the uh, main menu to portray, you know, it's a flight simulator game, to portray a an airliner underwater, especially in this current time when we've got about, you know, half the nations of the world currently looking for a jet that ditched in the ocean uh, about a month ago now um, 
and that has obviously been put there because of you know to reference that and I don't think that's you know I think it is a little bit too soon to be uh, um, referencing things like that and just the general state of the game is something that you should just avoid uh, I I don't know what your general uh, inventory restrictions are carrying 10 foot barge poles but um, if you are able to carry one and you do carry one uh, don't touch this don't touch air control with a 10 foot with, with your 10 foot barge pole um, and if you aren't carrying a 10 foot barge pole uh, mm, lead sheeting might might help um, sorry we're now slipping into Dungeons and Dra Dragons references here mm. so anyway that's me um, thank you for watching my little complaint about the state of GUI systems in a game but yeah uh, thanks for watching and I will see you next time